is an actual creek crossing. crossing and we are not sure if we can get through it. It's a creek crossing and we are not sure if we can get through it. I really hope we can because I really want to get to the beach. I really want him to fall in right now. <laughs> I guess my wishes came true. camp all set up so we're gonna go down and check out the beach.
look at these cool formations in the sand. Oh. So I woke up in the middle of the night last night, realized that I was out of fire starters. And so this morning I looked up on YouTube how to make your own. And I've seen people talk about using cotton balls and petroleum jelly. I didn't have any cotton balls, but I had some of those like makeup wipes. Well, I didn't have any, but there were some around the house. <laughs> Anyway, I've never I've never tried that before, but I'm gonna give it a shot and see. Pad. Cotton pad. It's a cotton pad, not a makeup wipe. I'm gonna see how it works. Maybe I'll put two of them on there. Woo. Oh, I can I can try the uh, I can try the Primal Outdoors method. I don't quite remember how you do this, Jason. Uh. Puts his knife. Oh, I know what he's And then like a piece of firewood yeah, or something. Yeah, and then bang it. Oh, yeah. look at that. Yeah, I learned that. Um, that works really well. Yeah. I learned that um, at the like the wild camp thing when I got like, oh, my yeah. first knife. And they wouldn't like let us use the big whatever axe thing, whatever that's called. And But we just had our like our large knife. And we'd do that. Maybe I can try making some little shavings like Jason does too. See the little kindling things that'll burn? Yeah. <laughs> I've never done this before. I don't know if my adventure knife is up to the task. Should I start to like build it? Uh, we need smaller stuff on there first. That's why I was trying to make some little small stuff. Whatever. Do I just like... Here, let's put some of this little twiggy stuff first. Twiggy stuff usually goes. Yeah, well, the thing is, can you picture where the flame is going to go? So it needs to go and catch these on fire. the latest addition to the kitchen build. Stove is admittedly on the large side and it takes quite a bit of space. But what I realized is that I could take advantage of the space inside of it to store some of the stuff that I'm bringing. Lemon. 
onion. Quinoa. All right, my idea for tonight was to make sort of a Moroccan chicken tangine. I obviously don't have the tangine dish with my camping stuff, so I'm just gonna make it in a skillet, but sort of with the same idea. I've got some chicken thighs, an onion. Oh my God. I saved it. The, the car is not quite level and the kitchen is not quite level. I tried to frame it as if we were, but uh, as you can see, we're not quite level. All right, first thing is to cut up some onion and garlic and get it sauteing. As usual, I'm using some coconut oil. Lighting tonight, courtesy of Big Tent Outdoors, the Claymore Three Face. This thing is fantastic. For now, I'm just browning up the chicken thighs. They don't need to be cooked all the way through at this point, just browned. They will cook through when the sauce is simmering later. So I kind of did that backwards. It really makes more sense to brown the chicken first and then move on with the onions and garlic. And then uh, you can start to add some other ingredients, uh, like some lemon zest. I don't have a zesting tool, obviously, in my camping kit, but I'm just going to cut some off and chop it up finely. Some honey. I pre-mix my spices, but I've got some cumin, turmeric, uh, cinnamon, and I think that's it. Maybe there was one more thing, but I think that's it. Some chicken broth. Is that rolling? It is. Oh. Salt and pepper. When's it gonna be ready? Oh, that's gonna be probably another half an hour. Are you serious? I'm serious. Get some chips or something. Then uh, you can get your chicken back in there and let it start to simmer. Ideally, you'd want a lid on this. I don't have a lid for this pan, so I'm just gonna use my other pan. Some people like to serve their tangine with uh, potatoes. Some people like to serve it with couscous. Um, I'm gonna make quinoa. I find it a little easier to digest and it's similar to couscous. I would normally cook quinoa with water, but since I've got the chicken broth, I'm gonna go ahead and cook it in chicken broth for a more rich flavor. I believe a traditional Moroccan chicken tangine uses raisins, but I seem to remember that my friend from Morocco would make this using plums instead of raisins, and it was fantastic. So I'm going to use plums instead. And don't know if I remember that correctly, but I think it'll be good. Not plums, prunes. Prunes. Like dried prunes. Prunes! Very good for you, too. Yeah. Of course, no Moroccan tangine is complete without the key ingredient. Chickpeas. 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 As the dish is nearing completion, you can add the chickpeas in there, or garbanzo if you prefer. We're gonna call them chickpeas tonight because that just feels right somehow. Oh, I wish you could smell this. Mmm.
Around here, they're usually called garbanzo beans. A lot of people call them chickpeas. Garbanzo's a good word though. Chickpeas, it's like, they're not cute. They're not, no. they're not chicks. They're not chicks. Nor are they peas, for that matter. Boom. Garbanzo. Garbanzo. 